Liberia has finally started hitting the West where it hurts. The country has joined the likes of Burkina Faso in banning mineral resource exportation to the West. Liberia's bold decision to break free from the cycle of exploitation by Western powers is a significant step towards reclaiming its sovereignty and economic independence. By closing its doors to exports, Liberia is signaling a decisive break from the privileges enjoyed by its former colonizers and asserting its autonomy on the global stage. The roots of Liberia's current stance can be traced back to its history of European colonization, which has left a lasting impact on its economic landscape. Founded in the 19th century as a settlement for liberated African-American slaves, Liberia's colonial past intersects with broader patterns of European imperialism and economic exploitation in Africa. While Liberia did not undergo colonization in the traditional sense, it was heavily influenced by external powers, particularly in terms of its economic development. During the colonial era, European nations such as Britain and France wielded considerable influence over Liberia's trajectory, shaping its economy to serve their interests. The decision to close its doors to exports represents a bold assertion of Liberia's agency and a rejection of the exploitative practices that have characterized its economic relationship with the West. By taking control of its resources and refusing to be subjected to external manipulation, Liberia is setting a precedent for other African nations to follow in reclaiming their economic sovereignty. The economic legacy of colonialism in Liberia is deeply intertwined with the exploitation and extraction of raw materials. European colonial powers and later American interests established an economic model that prioritized the exploitation of Liberia's abundant natural resources, such as rubber, timber, and minerals, for export to their own countries. This economic model, while endowing Liberia with valuable natural resources, also created a pattern of dependence on the extraction of raw materials. The infrastructure and institutions established during the colonial period were primarily geared towards facilitating the extraction and export of these resources, rather than fostering domestic industries or value-added processes within the country. Consequently, Liberia's economy remained largely dependent on the export of raw materials, with limited diversification beyond resource extraction. The lack of investment in domestic industries and the absence of value-added processes contributed to a cycle of economic dependency and underdevelopment. Furthermore, the terms of engagement with foreign companies, particularly in industries like rubber, often favored the interests of external entities over those of Liberia. This unequal relationship perpetuated a system of economic exploitation and hindered the country's ability to fully benefit from its natural resources. Companies like Firestone played a pivotal role in shaping Liberia's economic landscape, particularly in the rubber sector. Through advantageous concessions and agreements, these companies prioritized their interests, often at the expense of the local population. This resulted in Liberia's economy becoming heavily reliant on the export of raw materials, with limited progress in industrialization and value-added processes within the country. This dependency has contributed to challenges such as limited job opportunities, uneven development, and vulnerability to global commodity price fluctuations. In response to these challenges, Liberia has taken bold steps to reclaim control over its resources and promote domestic value addition. A significant move in this direction was the decision to halt the export of unprocessed rubber. This decision was formalized through Executive Order 124 issued by the country's president in November 2023, temporarily suspending the export of unprocessed rubber. The rationale behind this strategic move was to bolster Liberia's rubber industry by encouraging local manufacturing and the production of finished goods. By prioritizing domestic value addition, Liberia aims to move away from its historical dependence on exporting raw materials and instead focus on adding value within the country. This shift in strategy not only promises to create more job opportunities and foster economic diversification, but also strengthens Liberia's resilience against external economic shocks. The issuance of Executive Order 124 marked a significant policy shift aimed at incentivizing rubber processing within Liberia. By promoting value addition through processing and manufacturing, 
Liberia aimed to retain a larger portion of the economic benefits generated from its rubber industry within its borders. The decision to halt the export of unprocessed rubber was driven by the desire to benefit small-scale rubber farmers in Liberia. By promoting local processing and manufacturing, the government sought to provide these farmers with improved market access, fairer prices, and increased economic opportunities. To effectively implement the ban on the export of unprocessed rubber, Executive Order 124 established a robust regulatory framework. It explicitly prohibited government entities from issuing export permits for unprocessed rubber and directed customs officers and law enforcement personnel to prevent its export. In addition to regulatory measures, Liberia has initiated investments in processing infrastructure to support the transition towards local processing. This includes efforts to establish processing plants, train workers in processing techniques, and improve access to technology and equipment necessary for rubber processing. These investments are crucial for building the capacity of the local rubber industry and ensuring its long-term sustainability. In its efforts to assert control over its resources and promote local value addition, the Liberian government has actively engaged with stakeholders in the rubber industry. These engagements involve discussions with rubber planters, exporters, and industry associations to gather feedback on the implications of the executive order and ensure a collaborative approach to its implementation. Liberia's decision to prohibit the export of unprocessed rubber represents a significant departure from historical patterns of exploitation and dependency. It reflects the country's determination to break free from external influences and maximize the benefits derived from its natural resources. This move aligns with broader pan-African movements advocating for increased sovereignty and control over natural resources. Across Africa, there is a growing sentiment towards asserting national ownership and ensuring that resources serve the interests of the local population rather than external powers. For too long, African nations have been subjected to exploitation, with their resources often benefiting foreign interests at the expense of local development. By imposing restrictions on the export of unprocessed rubber, Liberia asserts its authority to manage its resources in a manner that prioritizes national development and benefits its citizens. The ban on unprocessed rubber exports in Liberia aligns with broader efforts across Africa to promote value addition and industrialization. Instead of exporting raw materials at a lower value, African countries are increasingly focusing on processing and manufacturing to capture more economic benefits within their borders. This strategic shift contributes to the growth of local industries, the creation of employment opportunities, and the diversification of economies. Pan-African movements advocate for economic empowerment and wealth creation for African nations and their people. By halting the export of unprocessed rubber, Liberia aims to empower local rubber farmers and advance their economic interests. Domestic processing of rubber can lead to higher revenues, job growth, and entrepreneurship, aligning with broader economic empowerment objectives. African nations aspire to reduce their reliance on external markets and foreign investors, particularly in sectors heavily dependent on natural resources. The ban on unprocessed rubber exports represents a significant step towards decreasing Liberia's dependence on external buyers and multinational corporations. By prioritizing domestic processing, Liberia can retain more of the value generated from its natural resources and build a more resilient and self-sufficient economy. Liberia's decision to promote local processing and manufacturing within its rubber industry is driven by the desire to enhance resilience and self-sufficiency. By reducing reliance on exporting unprocessed rubber, Liberia aims to mitigate the impact of external market fluctuations and influences, thereby building a more stable economic foundation. Moreover, the ban on unprocessed rubber exports aligns with broader efforts to foster regional integration and intra-African trade. By encouraging local processing and manufacturing, Liberia can contribute to the growth of regional value chains and trade networks. 
This, in turn, enhances economic cooperation and collaboration among African nations, fostering a more integrated and interconnected African economy. Liberia's commitment to halting the export of unprocessed rubber reflects its aspirations for greater self-determination, economic prosperity, and collective advancement within the pan-African context. By taking control of its resources and prioritizing local value addition, Liberia aims to chart a new course toward economic empowerment and development. Liberia's agricultural sector represents a significant opportunity for job creation and economic growth. With its fertile land and favorable climate, Liberia has the potential to significantly increase agricultural production. Policymakers are focused on supporting small-scale farmers by providing access to resources, training, and market opportunities. Additionally, efforts to improve infrastructure, such as roads and irrigation systems, aim to enhance agricultural productivity and efficiency. Value addition in the agricultural value chain is another priority for Liberia. By processing agricultural products locally, Liberia can capture more value and create additional job opportunities. This involves investing in food processing facilities, storage infrastructure, and transportation networks to ensure that farmers have access to markets for their goods. In parallel, the development of the manufacturing sector is viewed as crucial for Liberia's economic future. Policymakers are working to attract investment and support local entrepreneurs in establishing manufacturing industries. This includes providing incentives for domestic production, improving access to finance, and investing in vocational training programs to develop a skilled workforce. Beyond agriculture and manufacturing, Liberia also sees potential for growth in sectors such as tourism and financial services. The country's natural beauty and cultural heritage make it an attractive destination for tourists, offering opportunities for job creation and revenue generation. Meanwhile, the financial services sector has the potential to attract foreign investment and support economic diversification. Liberia's commitment to building a diversified economy reflects a proactive approach to ensuring long-term economic stability and resilience. By prioritizing sectors such as agriculture, manufacturing, services, and technology, policymakers aim to reduce dependency on a limited number of industries and create more opportunities for economic growth. In particular, Liberia recognizes the importance of promoting manufacturing and value addition as key drivers of economic development. By transforming raw materials into finished goods, Liberia aims to capture more value within its borders and create additional employment opportunities. This strategy not only stimulates economic growth, but also reduces reliance on raw material exports, which can be vulnerable to external market fluctuations. Investments in infrastructure development play a crucial role in supporting economic diversification and job creation. Improved transportation networks, energy infrastructure, and digital connectivity are essential for facilitating trade, attracting investment, and enabling businesses to thrive across various sectors. Furthermore, Liberia's focus on promoting technology and innovation underscores its commitment to staying competitive in the global economy. By investing in digital infrastructure, promoting digital literacy, and supporting startups and innovation hubs, Liberia aims to harness the potential of technology to drive economic transformation and create new opportunities for growth. Liberia's prioritization of infrastructure development is a cornerstone of its economic diversification strategy. Investments in transportation networks, energy infrastructure, telecommunications, and water and sanitation services are essential for facilitating economic growth and attracting investment. Enhanced infrastructure enables the efficient movement of goods and people, which in turn boosts productivity and stimulates economic activity across various sectors. Moreover, Liberia recognizes the importance of human capital development in driving economic progress. Policymakers understand the need to invest in education, vocational training, and skills development to equip the workforce with the necessary capabilities for diverse sectors such as manufacturing, technology, and services. By enhancing human capital, Liberia aims to improve employability, foster innovation, and increase overall employment rates. Encouraging entrepreneurship is another key aspect of Liberia's economic strategy.
Policymakers are keen on supporting the growth of small and medium-sized enterprises SMEs, as engines of economic growth and job creation. SMEs play a crucial role in driving innovation, providing employment opportunities, and contributing to inclusive economic development. Initiatives aimed at improving access to finance, providing business development services, and implementing regulatory reforms can empower SMEs to thrive and contribute significantly to economic diversification. The country now challenges those who seek to benefit from its resources and places a greater emphasis on securing its benefits. This raises the question of whether other nations should adopt similar strategies. Why benefit the West this much when it keeps you at a loss? Let us know in the comments section if any type of partnership with the West benefits Africa in any way. Thanks for watching and please remember to like and subscribe so more people can see our content.